station. And so you can directly see kind of what. This is just to keep breathing. With your host, Richard Curtin, the National Radio. He did. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Tuesday, October 23rd, 2012. Can you believe that? This is Just Keep Breathing on irrationalbroadcasting.com. I am your host, Richard Curtin, and my in-studio guest this afternoon, the international goddess, Erica Andrews. Hi, Richard. Girl, how are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Good to be back. I love the new brothel. Thank you very much. We've been working really hard on it. Gorgeous. I am. Do you have problems with allergies in the fall? No, not really. I go through this every Halloween. I can see. It's every Halloween. It, it's like clockwork, really. And normally it happens after Halloween, but I think that the weather broke a little early this year. So, my nose just feels like it's too big for my face. You understand that, don't you? No, but I'm sure Crystal does. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Crystal, Crystal, you guys had a show last night at JR's. It's the Net Chicks on Demand. How was that? That was amazing. We had a great crowd. We had a good night. We had a couple of cocktails. It was a fun night. <laughs> I'll be back tonight with you. Yes, you will. <laughs> tonight, it's the Potluck Casserole Show, and you are... You are the hors d'oeuvre de specialis. The hors d'oeuvre to be served. <laughs> the a lot of enchilada. <laughs> Get a lot of enchilada. Get, Get a lot of enchilada. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on, Gail? What do you know? Well, I, I've been gone for a little bit, but I'm back for the week and next week. And I'm dealing with some of the colder weather in Chicago. But other than that, how is Chicago? Chicago's good. I'm liking it. I'm adjusting to it slowly, but um. So now you're calling three places home. No. So you're calling Chicago, San Antonio, and Dallas home. That's right. Yeah. How how do you manage all of that? Uh, I don't know. I just actually rest a lot. Most of the time when I'm in Chicago, I don't do anything. You know, I'm just like at home. I'm very the housewife. And then in San Antonio. I have my uh, my home there, you know, my that's my home, and I own my home there, and that's where I could just chill and catch up and do things around the house and get back to, you know, the norm. And then in Dallas, it's just dealing with you fucking crazy bitches at the Rose Room. <laughs> <laughs> so it works out good. <laughs> it's work, 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 work. Work, work, work. Yeah, it's all good though. So let's talk about um, how you juggle things. You know, I was recently talking to someone um, who didn't know if she wanted to run for a national title because traveling is so difficult now. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you manage it? I mean, how, how, how do you personally, as Erica Andrews, traveling around the country, manage traveling and... It's an interesting question. And, and how... How um, how much has it changed? I, I mean, mean I, we both know it's changed. it's changed. Everybody knows it's changed. It's changed a lot. And as a matter of fact, but just a few days ago, I was thinking about like starting some sort of blog or making a YouTube video or posting something on on, on these, um, you know, this in, in, on the internet about how much it's really changed, and um, just just the, the how the queens are are misunderstood as far as as far as the booking goes, you know what I'm saying, and yeah. dealing with the different club owners and different venues and different clubs, and, and just with the whole RuPaul thing, just the, the whole dynamic of all that, it's really taken a toll on on the girls who, who've who been in the industry f for a very long time, and then now the clubs want to negotiate booking fees, they want to um, uh, a, a nickel and dime a hotel, uh, get you in a little bit earlier, like 5 in the morning on a red eye, you know, and connect 20 through 20 million places to get from Houston to Dallas, you know, stuff like that. And I think it needs to be addressed, and I think that I, I am going to start a blog on that. And, and a lot of these bar owners, I don't think, realize that this is our livelihood. You know, we have late nights. As you know, we work Tuesday through, through Monday. And getting up uh, sometimes on a Saturday night 
or not getting up, staying up to go catch a five o'clock flight, I think it's just bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I think yeah. there's other ways to to work this out where it's convenient and more comfortable for the entertainer. And and I'm I'm thinking the and the end everybody gets a better show. But it has changed a lot, and I think they they're uh, misunderstood. They think that for a lot of us, this is a a hobby and not a career. So all of that just kind of pissed me off recently. I had a booking. I won't say where, but they tried to pull that stunt with me and first off I was just a little disappointed that someone who's been in the industry for as long as I have would think that I would think that he could try and do that you know what I'm saying I was a little insulted and I was like what did they actually do well they were um, they were trying to get me here I was in Chicago they were trying to get me the gig was in Texas and they were trying to get me here and then um, they were like well no girl well, we can't fly you from Chicago and I was like, well, then, then you can't have me then at your club. If you can't fly me, then I have a job. I work at the roast room. I, I don't need to leave. You know, it's, I'm very fortunate to have a regular job as a cast member at the roast room. I mean, it's a premier bar. We make, it's, we make great money there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When we leave, we, I, for me. You make less money. Make less money. And because you have to travel, you have to get there, you have two to... Two days are gone yeah. out of your schedule. And then you lose a spot, you know, on your regular night, which, you know, it's hard to give up when it's such a great night already to begin with. So when I go somewhere, it's because I really like the place. I really like the way the people are there. And uh, it's worth it. But when I'm dealing with, oh, well, you have to get your own travel, or can we put you at the Roach Kill Motel for the night? And it, it just, it's not worth it. At that point, it's just not worth it. I'd rather stay home. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. I think I'd really, I think that uh, I, I will s maybe start working on some sort of blog just to put it out there. I think a lot of the, you know, the bar o uh, uh, people have forgotten, you know, what the old, school, what it used to be like. You know, there's a certain la lack of respect, I think, now. And I, a lot of it has to do with, you know, there's, with, I mean, I, I don't really want to just blame the RuPaul gig, but it, it really has messed up a lot of the gigs for the regular show girls but the RuPaul the RuPaul girls are demanding a lot more money well and then they all they are they and then they're dealing with um, they, they all have managers and agents and um, they forget that to me I mean most of them I think they're all great but I see them once or twice while they're hot after the season's over and then you don't hear anything else about them I think yeah. a smart girl who's on that show would deal personally with her own booking business as they did before, they had their their fifteen minutes. But they don't know. I don't and, think. And and that's really my biggest my biggest problem with the RuPaul girls is they really don't know. I don't. They think really that. don't. Um, I have had very few of the RuPaul girls call me directly about a booking. Okay. Um, very few, and um, the ones that have called me directly are from the area. And they're, and they're going to be here for Halloween or they're going to be here for Christmas or they're coming in for someone's someone's party or something. Mm -hmm. And so those are the girls that have contacted me directly. Most of the girls, I think they think that they need a manager and they need a booking agent and they need all these people. Right. Um, when, when really I think that they don't. Well, I think that they all, because I think... Some of them they do. Well, oh, some of them have done really well. I mean, I have I have a, a lot of friends, as you do, on that have been on the show, will be on the show. And I think that the way that some of them handle their success, you know, their, their, their mainstream success on a, on a gay network, because it's not really mainstream, it's local. But I think they, that they could re really do something with it and take it and, and have longevity with it, or they could just fuck it up. And I think a lot of them do. I'm sorry, excuse my French, but I think a lot of them do that. They take advantage of it because they're on TV and they charge outrageous fees. Well, and I think that's, I, I don't think they know any better. I don't you know, it, there's, there's a I lot of the girls that haven't, the that haven't been um, on, that haven't been in a drag show, period. And a lot of them get on the show with really very little experience. Right. Well, you're, you're right. And, and so, um, Maybe that's something they should, uh, they are being told what to do. I think absolutely you're right. They are. I think they should teach them a little bit of uh, what the aftermath will await for them on the show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think it should be part of part of what they learn on that show. I think it's really hard to teach that. Yeah, yeah. But either you have it or you don't. Sometimes. It, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I I, th I think it's really I think it's really hard to understand um, how. I mean, it's a tricky business. It is. It's it a is very a very tricky business. business. It's a tricky business. You either. 
you either have it or you don't. You got to know how to sell yourself. It's we're self-employed here. You know what I'm saying? I I I've managed myself for over 20 years. I, it's and you've got to have you know you got to be personal with people. You got to know how to talk to them. You've got to know how to work it. You've got to learn how to be likable, and, and you've got to have thick skin. Yeah, you can't be a diva. So how do you travel with all the costumes and um and you know have you have you made adjustments to what you wear based on um, what you can travel with? A little bit. You know, I'm in Chicago, mainly, I'm not really working over there. I'm, I'm over there on personal, you know, I have my personal life with my um, boyfriend. But so all, all my stuff is here at home. You know, I have a lot of it at the Rose Room and I have a lot of it, a lot of it in Texas, I mean, in San Antonio. So I just kind of like work with that. <clears throat> it's just trying to get um, some of my stuff when I do work in Chicago over there. So I'll have like a I ha I'll have like a bag, a suitcase over there of cute, quick costume gigs, but I don't have all my Mufasas or I don't have all my coats and I don't have all that. So it's kind of like I have to work with what I have over there. <laughs> Mufasas kind of are I big hair. Mufasas are humongous. Yeah, and 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 they are hard to travel with. Hard. The reason this all came up is because of you know my working in Monster and wearing the credit card dress. How did you get that over? There? I had to ship it because um, I couldn't go through TSA with it. <laughs> so I had well, to tell mail. Us, tell, will you let everybody know what your credit card dress? Because I've seen it. I think it's amazing, but in detail so that we can get a visual of it. Well, the, it's, it's the credit really card dress credit. is um, How many credit cards are about 500 and they're all on ball chain and um, you know so they're credit cards and IDs from people who um, lost them or left them behind at the bars right. and um, I collected them and then we made them into my customer Brian Alden made them into a dress and it weighs about 45 pounds yeah. <laughs> and it's got about 500 credit cards on it and I cannot travel with it I would not be able to get through TSA security with it um, and I am sure that if it got pulled aside and they'd be like what the hell is this what are all these and so I like don't want to take that risk of right. losing it right. because it cost a lot of money to make it all that ball chain was right. uh, was you know almost four hundred dollars just, just to buy game. the ball chain to hook um, all the credit cards too. to you know, put the credit cards on them right and then you know it took a while to get all those credit cards and it took Brian Alden probably a month to make it so I mean there you go and you tipped around in that credit card dress all over New York did you perform <laughs> yes, in I it did, yes. I saw your pictures on Facebook crazy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was kind of fierce. Yes, I did. I performed in it, and then afterwards we made videos at um, Times Square, and you know we went to other bars and yeah. chipped up and down the street. And how much did um, it cost you to ship it? I'm just curious. Because well, it is, is it weight? Oh yeah, it, it's by weight. Yeah. But you know, and because you I had to ship that, I shipped everything. Oh, okay. You know, so then I shipped some boy clothes, and I shipped, you know, I shipped the hair, and I just put it all in a box. Um, I'll tell you, it was two hundred dollars going up, but only one hundred and forty going back. Why was that? I don't know. UPS going up, FedEx coming back. So um, FedEx. apparently, FedEx uh, ships nice. things cheaper. Yeah, well, we'll do FedEx next time. And I, I have no idea if it if it it's cheaper to ship to New York, right? Or cheaper to ship back. From the, I have no idea. I right. have no idea right. why it was right. so different. Um, it it could be just the two different carriers. Three hundred bucks to ship Miss credit card. Right. right. Round trip. Round trip. She <laughs> flew first class, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and so, do you have that kind of? Do you have that kind of problems? You know, with, you know, um, I've been. I have been. You you don't have this problem, but I have been pulled over by TSA, wanting to know what these big globs were, and those are my boobs. And, um, well, you come with a lot of accessories, Ed, and, and I have to. You do, you know. Really, uh, I, I'm not only I'm not only traveling with Richard. I'm having to travel, travel with, with toilet bowls, right. bloody babies, <laughs> knives, all sorts of crap. You, I mean, you're you're a bucket full of. Trinkets. I'm a, I'm a bucket full of trunkets, right? You are. So. Um, and so. Uh, my my main thing when I travel, but you have I mean, but you have Mufasa and I you have, have, have spray and you glue. have and you have glue and you have spray things and you have aerosols and those things sometimes get pulled out of yes. the plane because of a I don't know a hazardous issues yes. you know they might explode the glue might blow up all over the place those can cans so every so every now and then they'll pull me they'll call me to the gate they're like well, we we have to confiscate these because of 
w uh, it spray adhesive it might bust in, in the in the belly of the whatever and I'm like I've been traveling so it's a lot uh, sometimes not all the times most of the time I get by but a lot of uh, you know on a few occasions they've pulled out the hairspray mainly it's the spray adhesive for to glue our you know pasties or whatever we're gluing on and sometimes the tan <coughs> so those are my only issues you know I can usually carry my Mufasa's with me on I'll, I'll just bring a, a big carry-on and I'll shove it with all of my hair and um, heels and a stretchy dress just in case my stuff doesn't come in yeah <clears throat> you know so just a little backup backup plan but, uh, and I can't do that I mean, I, I have to have yeah. boobs. How are you going to carry on your toilet? Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to have the boobs, you, you have, know? You have to have the boobs. Um, and gotta have boobs. You gotta have boobs. You gotta have boobs, you gotta have boobs for Christmas. Are you making the remix for this year? <laughs> Absolutely. Right, it's, the, it's coming God. up next. The remix is sick, babe. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So other than that, I think um, everything w has been working pretty smoothly. The travel is not that much of an issue. You know, I... Since I have a lot of stuff here, this is where I mainly do all my shows. At, in Chicago, once a month, maybe I'll do Hydrate. I'm not trying to get into no regular uh, gig over there on the weekend. I mean, I love coming here, so why get into something else over there? I won't be able to have... It, it'll defeat the whole purpose why I'm spending time over there. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. why go over there, work weekends when I could just be here every single weekend? So, other than that, it's, it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. It's, I'm adjusting to it slowly. The weather's kind of killing. I went out, we had a small cold, cold front a week or so ago, and I went out. I did. I thought I was being cute and fierce. I didn't wear no sunblock or anything. I got fierce burn on my cheeks just yeah. from the cold wind. I'm, we're not used yeah. to that here. You know what I'm saying? I was red, rosy cheeks. The next day, I was burning up, and it was just a, the beginning of what is to come in yeah. Chicago. It's no joke. Well, they don't call it the Windy City because it's not windy. I know. It's fierce. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm stocking up for that. Jack was from Chicago. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. Yeah, Jack was from Chicago. Did you Did you ever live there? Um, we never lived there, but uh, we traveled there quite a bit because you know his family is there. Right. Yeah. It's It's a gorgeous place. It is. It is very. It's nice to get it. He's in the the northern suburbs. Okay. Yeah. It's It's Kildare. 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 Yeah. K i l d e e r. Yeah. West Hidden Valley. West Hidden. Valley. West Hidden Valley just sounds really rib, really white, doesn't it? Sounds it? very white, very, <laughs> very not my speed, but <laughs> I'm sure it was gorgeous. So, how are um, how are things with the boyfriend? Things are really good. We haven't had anything crazy happen. I mean, we do a lot of. It's just very normal. And I was I was talking to my friends about it, <clears throat> and usually, I mean, I don't know about you, but for me. I've always been the one in a relationship who kind of wears the pants, you know what I'm saying? And so, and, 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 and Miss Thing, <laughs> you should see her face. <laughs> Worship it. But I, with, with this relationship, it's really different because I, um, I'm actually not bringing in someone into my world. No one's moving into my house. No one's moving into my apartment, wherever. Where it's always been that way, this is not the case. So it's it's an adjustment, but it's good. It's different. I'm seeing a different side of of a relationship. It's different. I like it. It's just really weird to and me. And so, have you um, moved into his home? I have most of my stuff there. So it's and that's different too because I've got my personal, you know, like my clothes, like my everyday clothes there. But it's just really weird doing that. You know, I've been by myself like living by myself for over 20 years you know I've said this before on your show I'm a runaway I'm a runaway like ran away from home when I was like 17 with a box of clothes but after that I always made whatever little apartment or uh, efficiency my home and ever since then I never had to share or you know I never had to move into anyone else's home and this is really taking me back I'm like I almost feel like I'm back home with my mom and I'm like I, I don't know it's really strange but it's a good different. I'm adjusting to it because, you know, I'm with him, so it's, it's kind of sickening. Yeah, well, it's, it, 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 it's different. He's, he's not your mother. He's not. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's, talk about, let's talk about your titles. Okay. And um, we were talking, when I was talking to this um, impersonator who didn't know if, you know, she wanted to become a... Do I know this impersonator? Uh -huh. Do I work with her? No. Um, and, and fairly new. 
Um, why, why have you been so driven to win so many titles? Let's talk about the titles first. It's Miss Continental, Miss Gay USA, um, National Entertainer of the Year, International Show Queen, Miss Black Universe. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> I am a woman of color, though. That's what they say. <laughs> Miss Universal Show Queen in Hawaii. Yes. Uh, the international Miss International Queen in Thailand. And then, of course, the other national ones, EOI, Continental, and USA here. I've had a couple of others, Miss Transsexual America, that was something that, uh, who owned it? He was from Dallas. But, uh, rest in peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who I'm talking about. He had that. I'm stuck on Christian. It's, a, it's, it's not him. It's not, it's not I, him. And I see him. He had big eyes. I never really, um, yes. Yeah, um, uh, I see him. It starts with an O, I think. His name starts. Anyways, it'll come to us. Calexis will know. Calexis will know. And it is O. Is it Orlando? Orlando. Is it? Yeah, yeah. it is Orlando. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. So uh, I did his and um, a couple of other local, lo local pageants, but the main ones were the ones that we just mentioned. Right. And I really come, you know, coming into the the industry, you know, at a really young age. My ex boyfriend was into pageants you know he would do drag we were both two little young queens you know running around doing each other's makeup and we uh, he put me um in he we put me myself together to go do a talent night at the time the paper moon in san antonio that uh rafael oh, was managing at the time and so i <clears throat> had no idea that that was going to turn into something more that i would want to do or pursue so so I did. I did the the newcomer of the year. You know, I, we got it myself together, and then it started from there. Yeah. You know, after that, I qualified to. I was first runner up or second runner up. I don't remember, but then I qualified to do Miss San Antonio USA, and so that's how it started. But it never really was anything that I thought I was going to end up doing professionally and and as my livelihood and a career. It just. I always was a makeup artist by trade. I worked. You know. At. at several makeup counters. I used to work for Glamour Shots back in the early 90s. Not Girl, Glamour Shots. Glamour Shots. Did you ever have one of those taken? No. Edna Jean needs to go with Ed Glamour Edna Shots. Jean. Edna Jean needs Glamour Edna Shots. Edna Jean needs a Glamour yeah, Shot. She that, really that's does. ideal for you. Yeah, with the little flowers. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and uh, <clears throat> I, I did that and I always had a daytime job and I would, do, I would do it as a hobby. I liked it so much. I loved dressing up. I loved being glamorous. And um, sh surely... I mean, after, I think it was like three or three or four years being into it, you know, Raphael was pushing me to do more and more and more. I didn't really think that I could do it because I would see the, at the time, I was like really young and I would see the other entertainers come out and bring out these huge talents and dancers and, you know, the girls could kick and split and flip and all of that. And I just thought that you had to be that type of entertainer to be an entertainer. And, you know, there's all different types. I found that out later on. But um, I was just really intrigued by it. The gowns, the, you know, I just love gowns and glamour and, and the, all the different categories, the interview. I couldn't really speak English that well at the time. So I, it was a challenge. I wanted to, I wanted to uh, overcome that fear. Every time I go into an interview, I'd sit there and not say a word and lose the pageant because, I, one, they couldn't understand what the fuck I was saying. <laughs> Two, I couldn't understand what they were asking me. And then my accent was so thick that I started just doing an interview in Spanish. And then they were like, well, you know, m most of them in San Antonio, because my pageants were, were in San Antonio mainly. So they were all, they were, they were all Latinos. Most yeah. of them could understand. So, but, you know, I, 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 I took like a, a couple of courses just to better my speaking. And, you know, so I, it, it helped me. It helped me grow. It helped me grow in a lot of ways. It helped me, my confidence, my, you know, my interview uh, just everything you know drag really grooms a girl it really i mean it, it, it does. really does our closets are fierce yeah i just saw your closet right here <laughs> your studio is fierce yes it is it's no joke it's a full warehouse <laughs> and and you know i don't get rid of a thing and i know that you don't either don't. at some point even if you don't wear it anymore you know that it's got pants it's or it's got a jacket right. or it's got a top that can that that you know, so eventually I know that something else, or I'm going to do drag queen mud wrestling again, and I'm going to use, you know, something that I don't wear anymore to ruin. Well, you can, or I think at the end of all this, maybe when we're older school, 
we could always have a little Edna's closet and you can sell online your pieces. You know, there's a yeah. lot of great pieces that, that we, you know, uh, they get into our closet through the years. We have so much stuff that is vintage now, drag vintage. Oh, well, mine was vintage to begin uh, with. To begin with. I've seen yeah. some of your pieces. I've, I've got a lot classic. of really old vintage stuff. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff, you know, I, I collected because it is very Edna Jean, yeah. but I can't wear it because it's too small. But it's exactly what Edna Jean would wear. So this is the pattern of what um, Edna Jean should look exactly. like. So I, I buy that to have it duplicated right. in a smaller size um, that fits Edna Jean. <laughs> <laughs> she's such a petite little she, pig. A little she's pig. a petite she's flower. A flower. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when you look back at all the pageants, um, is there one that stands out for any particular reason? Well, they all do in some way, but the one that I think, um, you know, I, I had a, a very, very uh, different experience in Thailand, of course, you know, that's overseas, it's a different culture, different rules, regulations, just being in that country already, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things, is, they're great people, it's called the Land of Smiles, I was in Pattaya, Thailand. But, <clears throat> and I'll tell you a quick story, you just, um, when, you're get, when you're getting into their country, you go, you read, there's a pamphlet that is provided to you in the back seat of the airplane seat, and then you, you, you know, uh, do this, or known for this, on this day everybody wears yellow, so on and so forth. Uh, and it also says that under no circumstances are you to ever pat anybody on their head because that's the most important part of their body and that's what they value the most. It's very disrespectful to them. So you can never touch anybody's head, ever. So um, uh, we were doing rehearsals and um, in their theater, um, Tiffany's, it's called Tiffany's. It's, a, it's full of trans, beautiful transgendered entertainers. There's over 150 girls in their production. It's like a, it's like a theater show, it's fierce. And so they rehearse at 2 o'clock every day. <laughs> and we were rehearsing for our pageant. We were doing a run through, you know, music, check sound, all of that. And apparently one of the contestants didn't read the, pam didn't read the pamphlet. And so there was all these little um, Thai boys running around, trade. Gorgeous. They, they kind of look like Latinos and they're buff. They're, you know, they got to carry the heavy weights and the curtains and all the hydraulics and everything that goes on with the show. And um, they were very flirt flirty with the girls, especially the girls that came overseas who didn't look Thai, I guess who li looked exotic to them, whatever it was. One girl in particular was flirting with this one, one, one um, maintenance guy all through rehearsal, and he had a shaved head. And he drove, he, he passed by us, we were all in line about to be brought out for a run through of a swimsuit, I think. And uh, she said, bitch, he is straight, and he's, look at my baby, and she pat she patted him on the head. <laughs> Edna Jean Robinson, that whole entire theater came unglued. They stopped everything. The girls were screaming like crazy backstage. The Thai girls, the producers went crazy. They grabbed her. They took her into the office. They were about to ship her back to America. It was that. Wow. Weird. So that was, a really in that was a really interesting thing for me to see because they really take that very seriously. You, they don't mess around with that and so she you know had to do like this apology and 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 of course th they knew that she hadn't read the the, the i guess the 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 rules or whatever you call it that but it was it was a scene did you uh, did you ever feel like you know um I did. Did you ever feel like, oh, you I, know, I don't I, like you, girl. I, I did. did. It, it, Get out of my face. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it crossed my mind, but I wanted to win, so I wasn't going to go there. <laughs> it well, just knowing thing. that you couldn't do it. Right. It makes you. Kind of think about doing it. I, or what if I did it? Just, just yeah. what if I touched it? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. The whole pageant stopped. So that's interesting in yeah. the different cultures. Aren't you glad you read the bat? The, the I, did. I, I did. I I did. I was, and she was standing right next to me. She's a good girlfriend of mine, and it's when she, I saw her going for the head, it was almost like in my head, like a slow motion thing, and I was like, no! <laughs> I tried, and I was just like, I, I, it just couldn't come out. I was like, uh, 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 and, and there it went, and they went berserks. 
I mean, the place came on. When I tell you, the whole entire theater shook. I'd never seen anything like it. And well, of course, to us over here, we don't, we don't, we don't care. People throw shit all over my locker all the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, Chris, Crystal. It was Crystal. Crystal. I told listening. Crystal on Sunday, don't, don't pull that stuff out, girl. That's you know, shady. You, you, you know what that's going to happen. Shady. Y'all are just going to start have, yelling at each other. Well, and I had, we had been having a c- c- cocktail or two, and so it just made everything more intense. Yes, it certainly did. You kept blaming it on you, though. I know, I heard. That's so that's shady what, of her. That's what people all kept on saying. They always and try and do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> trying to throw me under the <laughs> bus. Trying to throw me under the bus. So, um, how long was this pageant in Thailand? It was a week. It was very intense. It, it, it was and most of them are about a week, aren't they? Most of them are about a week. But this one was a very different uh, weekly set of events because it's a huge uh, sponsored pageant, you know, by Ripley's Believe It or Not. You've got a banana boat sponsoring it. You've got all these different sponsors that pay for, you know, the price for the winner's $10,000 a trip to Japan for two, several appearances in Thailand throughout the year. They pretty much put you up for a month with everything paid for. You know, you live at a resort. You know, you go to Europe to make an appearance. And so you do a lot of public speaking. It's not about the talent there. It's about how well you can speak. And so me being Mexican helped a lot because I did a lot of interviews in Spanish. So they, we did a lot of TV shows. We did a lot of, like, um, press conference and a lot of interviews got to meet like their their mayor and you know a lot of the politicians in time so it was a really great experience it was like a what i would like to call a real girl like the miss universe yeah so our weekly events were get in the bus you would get a memo under your your hotel door and it would say today this is what you're wearing we all had the same shirt every day you're wearing capri pants or you're wearing shorts we need you in sneakers or we need you in heels so it, it so everybody was the same. I did you ever did you ever get a note with something you didn't have? A request that you were going to have to wear that you didn't have it? No, I actually because it was such it was really easy, but I I learned after my first day out on the bus because we're on the bus um, to pack a bag with costume changes because a lot of times we didn't have time to freshen up. So we would go from breakfast to a sponsorship event, like to go play volleyball, to promote, uh, to give credit and to promote a sponsor that was, you know, sponsoring uh, the most Miss Congeniality Prize. So we'd have to do like a little, like a little reel. And then they would play it on the screen or they w- it would show on TV, the girls of Miss International Queen. And it would show us like playing volleyball, having a good time. But it was all work. It was a lot of work. And so um, we would we would just do things like that. So after shooting a volleyball scene, you know, girls sweaty, but and then we'd have to go to lunch. So I, I started packing a bag with wipes, a little costume change, you know, maybe a sandal, uh, that dry, dry shampoo, and it, because it, it started at five in the morning, we didn't get back to our rooms like till eight or nine at night, and then do it all over again. So it was a lot of work, a lot of physical work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not a lot, not doing talent, and it was a yeah, lot. Yeah, it was a very of demanding schedule. And then right from the beginning, you could see who your top ten were going to be because media was always following us, and it was the, always the same ten who were up front, the sa- first same ten that were talking, the same ten that had opinions, the same ten that. So you pretty much could see out of like the thirty some girls, and these are girls that came from all around the world. Right. And it's 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 interesting because it's a pageant only for for pre up or post up. Uh, women, you know, transgendered women. So it's really interesting to see all the different cultures come together. There's girls from India, and then you saw, you had someone coming in from Australia, and then you had the European girls, and you had, you know, uh, Africa. It was really cool to see all that. Japan, and you had the Thai girls. So none of us really, a, a whole bunch of them didn't speak Thai or English. It was really cool to be around other cultures, yeah. transgendered cultures. It was a yeah. really neat experience. Yeah. Um, do you think that it has helped being Latino? I think a so. A Latina? I think so. I think, in that, I think for that, it really did. Yeah. I think for that, it came in handy. And um, it was really interesting because when we, we, we have um, the beginning of the pageant, there's a, a, a category, the, uh, the off-white cocktail category, where you go and... Um, each contestant goes into a room where all the judges are sitting, and there's 15 judges. 
and they're sitting like in a U shape. You know what I'm saying? There's five on the side and five facing you. You go in and you stand in the middle, almost like in a half box, and they pretty much check you out from head to toe. First off, to see if you got the men when you're wearing off-white. It's off white, not white. So yeah. the girl, there's a couple of girls who showed up in white. Already that's 25 points off because you didn't read the rules. There were fears. Well, when I walked in there, oh. <laughs> when I walked in there, <laughs> the first thing. Did that ever happen from some, anyone else? From like a judge come up and you didn't read the rules, baby? No, but, I we, mean, but, but in <clears throat> our rooms, like the girls who weren't from Thailand, we were always tapping each other. <laughs> I mean, and on the head with our hands. No, just, <laughs> but we walked in, and the, one of the first questions that, uh, one of the, ju- the first question that one of the judges asked me was, ¿De qué parte de México eres? So he almost was like, are you really Mexican? Yeah. Because he was serious and looked at me like, let's see if, if you're really, because a lot of the girls BS. You know, I mean, I guess they were yeah. bringing fake uh, nationalities. I don't know. And I said, de de Nuevo León, de qué parte eres tú? And then he was like, and so we started talking, but he looked Thai, but he was half Thai, half Latino. And so it was really interesting. So there were, they, you know, they come around. So they were really to, trying to get you, but get they you. were really also, you know, checking, yeah. um, checking your vital statistics, mm-hmm. if you will. Right, right. So that was interesting, and I'm glad that I wasn't trying to be a, a knockoff. You know, it was. Yeah, it, it was a it was a really intense pageant, and it was a lot of talking. It was all media. The talent wasn't judged. We did a, a minute and a half worth of it's like it was very like you just come out, do like a little act to kill time for commercials for commercials, but it wasn't judged. It was something to kill time in the show. So everybody put a little m- tiny presentation. You know what I'm saying? It really wasn't a talent. So that was not judged. How odd. Isn't that odd? That is odd. So, and you know, and I... Who are some of the formers? Do we know any of them? Mimi Marks. Yes. Mimi Marks and the other girls are from, um, two from Japan and one, two from Thailand and one from Japan. That, Do you that, go back every year as a former? I went back when I gave it up. I haven't been back. It's usually held at the end of October and it's about a week, so, um... It, it, it's just a lot of time to take off, you know, and it's, it's uh, you know, they fly us up, they put us up, but it's like a lot of time to take off yeah. from work. So I haven't been back. I'm thinking maybe next year. I mean, and just make my vacation out of that. What do you think about the girls who do pageants and only do pageants? Well, I mean, it's very expensive. If they only do pageants, it's very, ex- especially, especially if they don't have a good bar, that's supporting them and sponsoring them. Pageants are very expensive. As you know, a gown can cost anywhere from 800 to $6,000. Or more. Or more, depending on yeah. what you're getting. So, I mean, I think that, you know, if, if you're going to take something that serious, I mean, a drag is something that is a serious career move. You know, if you're going to do it, you have to absolutely do it right. Have a backup plan, though, just in case, because it really... It's an expensive career well, for pageants. I, I think that um, I, I see a lot of girls who don't work in a bar and don't have a show, don't do shows, but do pageants. Yeah. And um, well, they make their living off of you know selling drag, or they 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 work it. They, you know, yeah. I mean, I mean, or they this, do something else for a living. Or they do, and they, and in this business, there's a lot of boosters. There's a lot of queens that go out there and they rig and they sell as things for half the price. I mean, it's the truth. I think it's in every, in every business, but I mean, more so in this one. And thank God for the boosters. We don't have to pay full price for rhinestones sometimes because, girl, I mean, it's hard to, hmm. to stone a dress um, at full price. I, I'm not sure. I, I, I agree with thank God for the boosters. Well, I, I, for me, I'm sorry, I can't afford a full Swarovski stone and I'm getting fully beat it. So there's boosters out there that come in handy for me. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't buy from the boosters that much anymore, but when you're in my day, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, there's only so much you can get from your sponsors. And it's changed. And, and it's, it's changed. It's changed. If you, don't um, you know, the, the crystals are a lot more readily available now. You can get them now. And then yeah. you've got the plastic ones that look yeah. real. And so there's not much boosting, I guess you're right, like it used to, because it's, it's, we have more access to. Before, if, if there was a site to get a stone and one queen had it, 
you had to go through that queen to get to that side because she was not about to tell you yeah, where to go get she those was stones. not going to let you know she was going to be the sparkling jewel the <laughs> one and only <laughs> you had to go through her <laughs> yeah so <laughs> yeah but time, it's changed it has changed a lot it has changed a lot and do you do you think that you're going to continue to to do pageants oh i don't know I, i'm you know i've for the past two three years i've been contemplating doing and you know i've talked about this with you and a couple of friends a new pageant a new system it's been around for five six years now and I, i've been watching it from afar i haven't been there uh, i've actually i've been there one time i've been there one time but i don't r necessarily know a lot about it but i think it's gaining good credibility i think it's something i think that the owners have that fire and passion like like the EOY content so USA promoters used to have back in the day because they're a young they're younger promoters and so yeah. they want to they're working their, their their system so I'm 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 leaning towards all American goddess right now a little bit if I were to do something I don't I don't think that there's anything else out there other than Miss Black Universe I think this is more fitting if I were to do <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you um, I Are you I have been considering starting my own system really and well, I was going to ask you if you were considering ever competing again. Well, and um, I, I, you know, one of the goals for 2012 was to compete once. Um, and as you know, I mean, I had several things made, and I was going to compete at Texas FFI, but then um, yes. I was in Vegas for the wedding. for the wedding, and it, it kind of threw everything off. Right. And it's all good. Every, everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. Right. And so, you know, every year I think that, you know, it's time for me to, you know, pull out a pageant again. Um, it, it's just, you know, that I never, I never found where I fit. And when I did find where I fit, which was EOY, mm -hmm. I, was um, I, you know. Things didn't you, turn out. Well, you have to believe in the system. Right. And um, when, the national, when the national system says it's a fundraiser, um, mm -hmm. but the promoters aren't allowed to, you get it. Yeah, I get and it. And so you have to believe in the system. Absolutely. And if you yeah. don't believe in the system, you can't compete in it. Right. Um, what is and, and I was told, you know, I've been told by many promoters, we'll never crown you because you're not what we're looking for. We know that you're going to sit on a toilet while wearing our crown. And, you know, and they're probably right. And so um, they probably are right. At some point, I am going to wear your crown and do something that you Crazy, do not the deem um, appropriate for me to be doing while I'm wearing your crown. And so, which um, is ironic to me because that that title is yeah, Nash, it's entertainer of the year, right? But keyword entertainer. entertainer. So that's right. your individuality. You know what I'm Correct. saying? Yeah. So whether you go out there and crap out Snicker bars. Because it's all an illusion. If the whole it's, yeah. It's so to me. It's when I hear things like that, especially with a system like that. It's a little like, well, I yeah. don't. Or what am I supposed to do then? Like, yeah, you know what well, I'm saying. Yeah. This is the one system that you can. I I truly believe you can pull stunts like that and be okay with. <laughs> right. It. Yeah. You absolutely. Um. And and at some point, you know, I know that. Um. If I were to. If I were to compete at Miss Gay US of A, I know that it would probably be somewhat inappropriate for me to wear the crown and to sit on the toilet. Probably. Um, as Miss Gay US of A. And I get that. I understand that. Um, and, and I think a lot of times that people don't understand of my respect, not only for the crown, but for their arena. Exactly. It's their job to decide how they want um, their arena filled Right. And how they want it represented. Right. I get it. I'm all about it. Um, so what about this pageant that you're thinking about producing? Well, you know, would it be something different that uh, entertainers and would it be, you know, they could do whatever they want and would it be open just to a certain type of entertainer? Because, you know, we have Miss America, <coughs> excuse me, who only, who only allows boy queens to do yeah. this. And then you, <coughs> you've got Continental who... It's not, you know, it's not uh, segregating or separating anything, but a lot of the TS girls tend to go to that system. And then the Ameri and then USA is mixed. Very so mixed, what would, yeah. what would yours be? I'm um, curious. I think exclusively boys. Okay. A absolutely no augmentation at all. Um, I, I think that um, 
one of one of the problems in the systems now is that there's too many. Right. And um, and so by throwing by throwing another one, am, am I just adding to the? Am I just adding to um, the to mayhem? The yeah. Yeah. To the mayhem of too many. Um, but what I have found is that there are so many boys like myself, mm -hmm. like Layla, mm -hmm. um, like Asia, mm -hmm. um, and Jenna, and Jenna. Um, we really don't have anywhere to go. Right. And the only place really to go is America. And which, by the way, I mean, I hate to cut you off like that, but we were talking about, and you said no alterations. And, and I think that, you know, America has a kind of messed up rule with that because how can you say that you just want boys to do this, but half of them have so much face work have so much silicone, silicone on, their on their face right. on their cheeks on their lips and that's no different than doing a little bit lower on your chest I mean, <laughs> right. if you're going to have a rule right so i, I kind of like it that. apply and so this one is absolutely none that's that's sickening just I like just that. none you, you, you have to walk Straight in up you, boy. you have to walk in as brian okay and and you have to live as brian mm -hmm. and and i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with not absolutely living not. as brian I just don't think there's a system out there, there isn't. that says you have to walk in with every pad, every butt cheek. <laughs> you have to work, you have to walk in with the, the with the know how to make your contoured face. You 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 have to walk in with the abilities to try rather than rather than walk in with the augmentations. Exactly. And I'm yeah. not saying there's any problem with that, no, but no. there's Continental for that. Right. And there's US of A for that. And right. um, and there's international show queen exactly. for that. Um, I don't think that there is a system out there that um, that really celebrates the boy queen. You know what I think, and that's what I want to call it. I th well, what's it going to be called? The boy queen. Oh, okay, that's sickening. That's really sickening. And I think that you would probably get a good turnout. There's a lot of girls. I'm giving all my stuff away on the internet. You're plugging a fierce, <laughs> <laughs> a pre plug, <laughs> a pre plug. I think it's a great idea for for. A for a pageant I really think I, I've never heard of anything like it I think there's a lot of boy queens out there you know what I'm saying that that they have daytime jobs or, or not but they they don't believe that altering any part of their face or body is gonna make them any better or worse yeah. as an entertainer you know what I love it um Putting silicone in Cassie's face is not going to change her MC skills. Absolutely not. And Cassie Nova is the best MC in Absolutely. the country. Absolutely. And I think that a lot of these girls, and I, and you know, it might be a sore subject for many, but, you know, for, for me as an entertainer, and I can speak for a couple of my girlfriends, you know, like Crystal and Mimi and Candace, I didn't, you know, I live my life as a woman and I didn't do any of this to be a better entertainer it's something that I was going to do regardless and I see a lot of girls and I see a lot of entertainers doing you know the alterations and doing all of these different things to themselves because they think that this is what the industry is looking for because they think that this is going to make them a better entertainer and you got to be entertainer within already to begin with right, you've exactly. got to be a natural everything else you know, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference because if you weren't good before, you're not going to be good after. Yeah. After whatever surgery alteration you did, I just for the girls out there who do that, it, you got to do it for the right reasons because this is something that you have to live with for the rest of your life. Period. And and, and you know the the show is only two, three minutes. You, <laughs> I mean, then you're done. What do you do when you're done? You're going to take out your tits. Right. You're going to take off the. Word. It's just a very. It's a very serious move. And I don't think, and I think a lot of the girls, you know, role models out there, I think we need more role models. I think we need more blogging. I think we need more education on, 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 on that, on that issue that that is not the way to go if that's not what, how you see yourself for the rest of your life. Yeah. It really, it, and, there, and I, it's a shame because I do see a lot of girls who walk around and they've, They've done it, but I, in my heart, know they've done it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And it's sad to see that. It, it is. really is. Because then, I mean, and then you've got to deal with yourself. And then uh, it causes issues. I've seen people with body dysmorphia, and then I can't, they constantly don't, they go crazy almost. You know, I, I have girlfriends who, they don't get themselves anymore. And I'm like, you did this for the wrong reason, girl. You know, you did this for a pageant. Did you know any of the girls that um, got pumped by the... Uh by the tire girl in Florida? I, 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 
I don't know if I knew them personally. I don't think so. I knew of them from Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that. You know, I've known girlfriends of mine who have unfortunately been, you know, treated by the wrong person and, and you know, it's been fatal. Yeah. You, I mean, it's some, this is something that's under the table. It's, I mean, and uh, silicone injections have been around for many, many, many years. They use them in burn victims, you know, to fill up the... the, the, the that sunken in when you get burned, you know, it eats up your muscle and stuff. So they fill up with silicone, some sort of great silicone at hospitals. They use it professionally, but when it's when it's being done, and and it it, it might not even be the right grade of silicone or whatever it is that using, and by someone who's not a you know, registered nurse or like a doctor, professional, you know, and going into your bloodstream, that's it. You're gone. Yeah, that's it. It's over. It's over. It, and it, it doesn't matter what they're putting in you at that point. If it goes into your bloodstream, that's it. And so, I mean, it's a very, it's a very, very dangerous thing to do. I, I mean, and I think that uh, to, to, I mean, I'm not against it, obviously, you know, but I think that you really need to do your research. Yeah. You really need to do your research. I, I'll tell you, I am against it. Um, now, I would never. I, what I'm against is the boy, and, I, and, and I've talked about this on many occasions on the show, but the, the boy who thinks he can be a girl by Friday and he's starting on Tuesday. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, 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 take, it took me 15 years to become a man. And so I, I, can't, I can't expect any boy to become a girl overnight. Right. And so what I'm totally against is all the silicone on Tuesday in your face, all the silicone on your body on Wednesday, and you're a total girl on Thursday. I'm, I, I agree with you. I, what I meant about I'm not against it is because, you know, I've done my research, I've done my thing, and I cannot judge anyone for it. Sure, for me either. It. And I can't either. But I can advise not to do it. Yep. I can't advise to, if you're really going to go down that path, to get an endocrinologist, go to a doctor, get on your hormone treatment is the first thing. Let Absolutely. your body develop. Do it right. Let it develop. Give it a few years. If you, need, if you feel like you're going to need bigger breasts, then do that. We both know a boy that had a cleft and got the silicone injections to get rid of that cleft and has a beautiful feminine face yeah. because of that. And so, right. it, it, so I get it. Yeah. Um, I think there's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it. Going to the Motel 6 on Skillman Audelia Absolutely the wrong um, way to and um, you know, getting silicone injections in your chest and your butt and your face and you're getting 20 of them in a day, I think is wrong. Absolutely. I agree with you. Not from uh, initial from the first syringe going into your body. Yes. Already, you're going into shock. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Already, from a regular shot that we get, a flu shot or whatever, we we react. Yeah. And now putting that in your body over and over and over and over and over. You know, that's how we've got all these fatal this th this mess that's going on with it. You know, girls dying. It's 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 horrible. Um, and and these girls don't know any better. And then when ro when I talk about role models, is they're being they're around other girls who have had it done, who are doing it, and they're they're at encouraging them. Girl, you need a little work done here. You, you got to do your lips again, do your cheeks. And why? We're so different already looking. And then what ends up happening is that everybody starts looking the same, and then you fall under that category, the tranny category look. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if you just yeah. leave yourself alone, and if you really want to go down this path, get on hormones, go to a doctor, and let that. Like you said, it took you 15 years to become a man. What makes any of us think that we can become a, a woman in a minute? Yeah, absolutely. And get on can. hormones. You it, can. Uh, you, you can't. You, we will never. But get, do it right. And, and then give it time. That's my advice to anyone out there listening and who is considering that. And then there's so much information. We've got, we've got the beauty of internet right now. I mean, you can go to you research. There's so much help out there. So when will Erica have a um, a help blog and assistance blog and you know I and it, this is I've been wanting to do it for years and I always feel so guilty and I'm sure that a lot of us who are in the business ask yourself you know you get emails constantly every day about how you do your hair or where did you come up with this mix or how can I get this look but I feel that if it I happens to me too. Yeah. And, and, and it does, I know really. it does. 
It does. I mean, you're you're a you're a, a different type of entertainer, and it's very different. It's unique, and people are curious. Yeah. Different is good. You know what I'm saying? People yeah. are curious about. So to me, it's like if I get one email, and I always, and if I answer one, I have to answer all of them. So I'm not gonna do, and I'm just I'm not gonna do one and not do all of them. So I most of the I be I'd never reply, because I feel guilty. You know, we've got all, a lot of people who, who follow us. Yeah. So I think a blog would be a good idea. I just got to figure out how, how to put it together and how to find the time to do it. But that's something that, something that I really, really want to do for the girls. Just like you want to do the boy pageant, I want to do uh, something like this on, 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 on a blog to help the girls who, there are so many girls out there who have no clue, who are runaways like myself. They have nowhere to turn to, so we become their, their parents. That's where the drag parent drag mom thing came from a lot of us leave our homes because we're not accepted. everybody's an andrews every you are an andrews <laughs> and you're an andrews and you're an, that's where that whole thing came from right. you know so we look for help uh you know for our role models and our friends and stuff but if you got a messed up queen who's always high and getting filthy and pumping her face out of control every night then that's what you're going to believe is right and you'll end up just like that and that's not right yeah it's not right. all the time i don't yeah. think that's right and so a blog is coming soon i'm just going to work out the the you know the little yeah, it, 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 it takes some time. It takes a while. You've been listening to Just Keep Breathing. My name is Richard Curtin. My in-studio guest today was the international show goddess, role model, housewife, world traveler, Erica Andrews. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. We'll see you tonight at JR's Bar and Grill, showtime at 11.15. You're going to get it. <laughs> You're going to get it tonight. Salsas and chips, girl. <laughs> Have a great afternoon. Like the only way we can fight as much.